Hello guys and welcome to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about how to write your first program in Java. So I have been talking about this lecture and the details of this lecture in the previous lectures as well and today we are going to focus exactly on how do we actually write a Java program. So as we have already covered how you can install Eclipse and how you can create a sample Java project in Eclipse. If you haven't seen that, please go back to my previous videos where you can actually see that. And once you have created your Java project, so your Java project might look like something like this. You will have an SRC folder here so, and uh, under the SRC folder, uh, you see some, some namespaces sort of things created here, right? we call these as packages and in Java you can think of package as something which can group multiple related artifacts together. This is simply a grouping mechanism I can say. It's a way to put all the related artifacts to a particular business problem into a certain place. For example if you are working in an e-commerce application so you have you might have created multiple Java files for uh, let's say for checkout and then some more Java files for the uh, filters flow, I would say, then some other Java files for designing the advertisements. So you have multiple Java files and these Java files now belo belong to these three different domains. So you want to group them together for easy accessibility for referencing each other uh, files with, uh, within the code. So if you want to achieve that kind of flexibility, you would group the checkout code files into a single package. You can name it as checkout package. Then you can similarly do the same thing for the advertisement package and for the filters package. So similarly, uh, I have created some packages here, which you can see. You see a package here, which says IO GitHub Vikesh Pandey Hello World. And how do you create a package? You just right click on this. So you go to the SRC and you right click You go to new. And here you will see this option which says package. So you can just click on this and write anything which you want as the package name. Let's call it as test package. Uh, it says invalid uh, because the package is a keyword. So it is not allowing me to put package here, but let's call it test package one. And you can just click finish and you will see a test package popping up here. Then you can right click on this again, go to new, and then you can create a Java class. Now, what is a Java class? A class is basically a blueprint for an object. It's basically the specifications of an object. Like I covered in the very first lecture, everything in Java is an object or most of the things in Java are object, I would say. So object is basically an instance of the class. So let's say you create a class for, if I take the same example of e-commerce, you create a class for writing the business logic of checkout and then you create instance of this particular class to work for a particular customer order. So class is basically a blueprint. It's the specification. It's the skeleton of the object. So once you click on this, you can create a class. Now Eclipse is a pretty smart IDE. It will provide you with a bunch of options on how you actually can create a class. What, uh, and it will also provide you with some uh, sensible defaults. For example, it will automatically select a source folder in your project which you have created. It will automatically select a package. In fact, they currently selected package. And if you want to change the package, just hit browse and choose any other package which you want to choose. So your, your class file will be created in that package. Then you can provide a name to the class. So let's call it as test hello world. And you can see I have followed a, a sort of a naming convention here. The first character, I've kept it as capital and then any other new word which is coming in my class file name is also capitalized. So Java would expect you uh, and it would encourage you to follow this naming convention that whenever you are creating a class, always start with a capital letter, then small letters and every new word you are writing can start with a capital letter again. Java will not throw an error if you don't do this uh, uh, H capital or W capital, but it's a good practice. The next thing is the modifier. We are going to cover the modifiers in details in the, in the uh, upcoming lectures. But for now, you can understand that anything which is uh, marked as public is accessible to every other Java class in this whole project. 
that's the basic meaning of making a class as public public as the name uh, suggests itself it means it's visible to everyone you can select a super class and again we'll talk about this super class later but if this is the java lang object is the super class of all the classes which are created in java again interfaces again an advanced concept and there are some other interesting uh, uh, defaults it provides for for example if you want to create a main method now what is a main method we'll just cover it in a while so i will not do that i will leave everything as default and i will click on finish so i have this new file coming up here and you can see it has automatically picked up the package which i selected and it has also written public class test hello world with a starting and ending curly braces in the previous lecture we covered about this curly braces that all the code block have to be in the curly braces whenever you write a java class the very first statement java would expect to have in the class is package name so make sure that you have package as a keyword and then the actual package name as the package name for that particular class you can see the package follows a dot convention and it always ends with a semicolon like all the java statements end with semicolon so that would be the first thing which you will write in your class second thing is the access modifier of the class like i said you want this class to be accessible to every other uh, file in this project then you can mark this class as public the next thing is the class keyword you need to write this particular keyword as is otherwise your class will not be detected so you write this as class then you write test hello world or whatever name you want to write but make sure that whatever public class name you provide here that name should match with the file name these two things should match the file name and the class name if they don't match you would experience weird behaviors as the class will not be compiled or class might not be able to run etc so always make sure that whatever file name you provide you always have a class with that name in your file so my class structure is is ready but there's nothing here in this class in fact you cannot you cannot even execute this class because for executing the class for executing any class in java any class at all in java you would need a main method in java main method is the entry point method of the java whenever you are trying to run any application be it a very small or very large java application you would always and always need a main method in the in the class in the project somewhere and you need to tell the java uh, runtime to execute that class and then the class will have a main method and the, your program will start executing so always have a main method otherwise your program will not execute and how do you write the main method so you first write public then you write static then you write void and then you write main and then you provide a parameter to this method as this now let's understand what did i actually write here first keyword is public because this method has to be public because like i said java runtime needs to be able to access this method so the similar concept which applied on the class is applied on this method as well that the entry point method has to be public otherwise java will not be able to find this method so you need to make this method exactly as public the next keyword is static you again need to uh, uh, write this keyword as is and the reason we write static here is because we uh, we want to run this particular class without creating an object of the class static is again a keyword which we will cover in the upcoming lectures but for now you can understand that whenever you want to access something within the class without creating an object then you need to create it as static the next is void void is basically the return type of this method the method name is main and it has to be main it cannot be main 1 or main 2 otherwise if you do that java will not be able to run your program because it will expect you to write this particular method exactly as what i have written here no changes at all should be there if you make any changes java program will not run because it will not be able to find the entry point method which is the main method so public static void main remember that you need to have this in your program so void is the return type which means that this particular program it will not return anything back to the run time because a method can have this capability to either return something or not return something for example a method which can uh, add two numbers will return the result of addition right so we return the result return is the word here in this case this method is not expected to return anything 
because there's nobody consuming it right java runtime will not do anything with the with the return value of this particular method that's why java will force you to write void here and main is the exact method name which you need to use java will expect you to supply a string array argument if we covered arrays in bit detail in the in the in the previous lectures and we will cover arrays in actually in the next lecture in very detail but you can uh, as we discussed that array is basically a sequence of characters or words or integers or anything right so in this case this is basically uh, the mandatory parameter which you need to write as is this parameter name can be anything obviously it can be arg args or whatever you want to write it as but the basic fundamental is that java will basically supply all the command line arguments using this particular string array that's why you need to provide this then let's write something in the program because this is a hello world program so i will just write system dot out dot print ln and i'll type a string here which says hello world and a semicolon so again i have been saying that i will explain this and now i will explain this why do we need this and what does this mean so as i've told earlier that whenever you want to print something on the console in a java program you need to write system dot out dot print ln now system here if you just go if you just hover over it eclipse will show what it is so system is basically a class which contains several useful class fields and methods it cannot be instantiated means uh, you cannot create an object of it and it provides many facilities like standard input standard output and error output exactly what we want to focus here because we want to use system class to print something on the standard output the standard output in this case is the console so if you want to input something or you want to output something or you want to output an error then you need to use system class and all of these standard input standard output and error are streams and that's what comes to the next word what is this out out is a stream to print standard output similarly we have system.err which is for printing the error output streams similarly we have system.in for taking its standard input streams so system.in system.out system.err these all are these in out and err are streams and then print ln is the actual method let's hover over that let's first see out here so you can see this is a stream object which is used to print anything which is ready to accept output data basically and then we go to the print ln method and it says prints a string and then terminate the line so like i mentioned earlier as well this whole syntax is used to print and actually this is the core method this is the real method which prints something on the console so system class uses the output stream to print something on the console using the help of print ln method there is also a print method so there are two methods one is print and one is print ln the difference is that in case of print method the print method will not provide you or terminate on a next line but in in system dot out dot print ln the ln means line here it will print something and it will bring the cursor to the next line if you do not use this and if you again use another print statement then both of the statements will be printed on the same line i will show that as well but uh, and then we provide any random string here which we want to print so you right click on this particular program you go to run as and you run as java application and you want to save this so you can say always save resources before launching and you see the output here so this is how you can run your first java program now let's also see the difference between system.out.println and system.out.print so i will just copy this here and i'll say hello world 1 let's say and this time i will not use system.out.println but i will use system.out.print just put a space here so that it's visible so if i use print how does that look like i go to run and i go to run as java application so now you see both of the outputs are printed on the same line there is no this output hasn't gone to the next line and now if i run the same program with system.out.println methods now both of these outputs will be divided on two lines the first output then a line break the hello world 1 goes to the next line in the previous run the hello world 1 was printing right next to it on the same line so that is the difference so this is how you can build your very first program the hello world program in java 
and this is where i would like to end this particular uh, session as well in the next session we will be discussing about arrays in java and if you enjoyed this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos and we'll see you again in the next lecture thank you